Hello YouTubers, welcome to P. Dinah Royally Teachable Moments. I hope you're doing well today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get into it. We all know that Harry has been in the courts. He didn't show up yesterday when he was supposed to the entitlement and yet He's there today, but just casually coming in on day two when he was supposed to have been there yesterday is just gotten off to a really bad start. And it's continuing to be in a state of entitlement that is so disgusting. We know that he was in hot water from the moment he got there from just completely dismissing the fact that the judge wanted him to be in the court. And now there's two cases on the same day that are talking about this man. I mean, it really is just a coincidence, but it gives you the insight into what we're seeing right now with the drama of everything that is happening. I say, get your popcorn. And we got the popcorn <laughs> and we watching like, oh, my goodness, he's going to court now. He's going to court. The courts in America and the courts over in the United Kingdom talking about this man. Mm, mm, mm. And yeah, they're going to keep talking because we know about the other court cases to come. This is just the beginning of all this craziness with Harry and his wife. Speaking of which, isn't it interesting that she is nowhere to be found? Like anytime this man has anything to do with being within the public, knowing that he really doesn't like being in the public spotlight this way, where it's the cameras are all directed on him and she loves the cameras. So you would think she would want to be there smiling, holding her husband's hand, going into the courtroom, doing these things to show support. But isn't it interesting? Crickets. Crickets. Where's she at? nowhere to be found. This is a sign of some craziness happening. So looking at these two cases that Harry is finding himself in, in the United Kingdom and over in the United States, I'm going to show you how the connection between these two court cases is quite unique in that it paints the picture that could really, in terms of his U.S. court case, get him into a little bit of hot water. So the first court case is about Harry's visa application. We know that when he applied for that, he had to go under oath. So when he applied for his visa to move to America in 2020, the one question that he was asked by Department of Homeland Security for his DH-160 visa form had asked this question, have you ever been a drug user or an addict? The second question was, have you ever violated or engaged in a conspiracy to violate any law relating to controlled substances? Now, remember, under oath, the Heritage Foundation is interested in really how Harry answered these two specific questions. And so they're looking at very closely Harry and he is the poster child. <laughs> This man is the poster child for this Heritage Foundation because to have this specimen of a royal here in America going through the nonsense that he's going through, do you know they just licking their chops over there at the Heritage Foundation? So and they're also looking at the consistency of which the Department of Homeland Security, how it applies its own policies when granting visas, because, you know, there are people within these administrations or within these departments that can give preferential treatment to one person and not another. And we know there's a lot of things that are not fair that are happening. And so they're looking and making sure that they are applying the law equally amongst the people. Their allegation is that DHS, Department of Homeland Security, operates double standards and preferential treatment from time to time. They're saying that the Heritage Foundation is saying that this is the perfect case for us. This is perfect. <laughs> You know, we're, we're searching, we like trying to find, well, where's the, where is the double standards in this administration and how they're applying the law? Let's find, let's see, well, how do they get their application? They're going through the papers and then all of a sudden, oh, Harry, <laughs> the prince, 
Perfect. Thanks for making this job easy for us, Hera. You've made it very easy for us to find the perfect person to help us prove our point to the administration that we are trying to see what kinds of things that they are doing that are not right. And this young man, this prince from the United Kingdom is going to help us in what we're trying to do with our goals. This Hera. <laughs> He's going to help us meet our goals. So the Heritage Foundation has failed to obtain, we know, the visa applications through the Freedom of Information request. And the U.S. government, what they're saying that this is something that is infringing on his privacy. But he wrote a book. This is all bad all the way around. The whole everything that this man has done is like the perfect storm just coming together. It's essentially a case that has come together in a way that is not good for the Biden administration. If they are giving preferential treatment to a prince that is doing drugs or Prince Harry has lied and now needs to be held accountable for lying. These are the two things that are at stake right now. And so now that this judge has this and this has gone further because they didn't want to just openly give out the information from the Freedom of Information Act. There's a judge now that is going to decide whether or not it's in the public's interest. And I can assure you, yes, it is in the public's interest because look at all the people talking about this man right now. Because why? Oh, because he's suing also the newspapers over in the United Kingdom. Oh, yes, it is in the public's interest because this is a man now who is over in the United Kingdom, has a lawsuit against them for invasion of his own privacy. But yet here in America and with his book, he has given out all of his own private information willingly. That argument just goes out the window because you are openly giving out information about your life. We're going to now talk about his case over in the United Kingdom. So that's what's happening over here in America. Usually when celebrities are going to court, they have their significant others with them. This woman ain't nowhere to be found. And that's very telling. It tells me that all the things that has been said about this couple leading a separate lives is true. Megan ain't got no time for this man. She's busy meeting with her agents. She's planning her public relations. She's getting herself together. It's time to just, okay, I got to do me now, okay? <laughs> he can go to court. I don't care. That's how she's thinking. That's what I say. So Harry has gone over to the United Kingdom down for this court case. He was late and he blames the tabloids for inciting hatred and casting him as a thicko and a playboy. Now, I ain't never heard this word thicko. So we know that he wants to make sure that all of this unlawful behavior is exposed. He wants to expose the unlawful behavior of these media companies that are doing bad things, getting information to tell these stories within the newspaper. And yet we have this man in America essentially getting ready to get exposed for his unlawful behavior because we know he didn't tell the truth. Come on now. We know he did not tell the truth on that application. He is in the end, the one who is losing. But I don't think he can see it. I'm president at what we're dealing with. And he can't see how he's at the losing end of this battle, regardless of what happens with this witness statement that he's been given for this court case. Regardless, he is at the losing end of this battle of life. And this is how you know someone that is not dealing with a full deck. They can't even see the simplicity of that. Does he not see how he's exposed other people and talked about his family and given out information in his book, Spare, what he did to other people, but the press is doing things to him that he doesn't like? You know, you think the rules don't apply to you. They only apply to other people. These are the type of people that always wind up getting themselves in trouble because they don't deal in reality. It's really sad. It's so far out there that you look at, well, where does this lead for him in the future? Like, how do you move on with the life that you have before you right now with your wife, your current circumstances being estranged from your family? When you think like this, trying to bring some kind of justice to the press, when you can't even bring justice to your own circumstance because you can't really get played. 
you get ready to get played in a very big way. You're going to try to want some justice for yourself because I'm telling you, this woman that he's married, oh yeah, she's going full go on him. She's going to wipe this man clean, wipe it clean. She just going to be like, <laughs> You know, she's going to just, okay, I'm done with you. Here's the ring. Got my two kids. And she's off doing what she does. And so as you see, he hasn't really brought anything that's sound evidence to his argument. And I don't see this case being won. Because how the media was, I believe this is going from... 90, 92 to 2011, things that happened within this time frame. The press has changed so much from even when Diana died. And considering you just have your innuendos, you have your assumptions about what you think the press has done to get this information. And then with this information that, that you say they have, you say that they are the reason why you have done the things that you have done. It's just nonsense. And I think he is in a position now where he's learning the hard way. He's learning from his mistakes that what he did was not the right thing because he did it and he's not taking responsibility. But when he starts to take responsibility, which we don't even know if that will ever happen, but we do know that he will wake up one day realizing that his brother, his family, he really loves them and he misses them. How do you bring back and mend that relationship when you still have the peace of a relationship that caused this divide? How can you make yourself whole again? Harry is a broken man and I just seriously do not see how he's going to put the pieces back together for the sake of his own well-being. I just don't see how you get to a better place considering you've made some poor choices and you're still not able to be accountable for the things that you've done still. It's like wake up to the reality that it starts with you, not with someone else wanted you to be or what you think they're trying to make you out to be. The buck stops with you and your choices and what you decide to do, not what you think they did in an accusation. Now, come on.